Hello everyone, today we have another CMake video. Specifically, we're gonna talk about C-Test, which is a unit testing framework that's basically built into CMake, so super handy. If you look at your screen, you'll see that we have our int main function and we are accepting the number of arguments passed in through the command line and then also what those strings are that are passed in. And if you've worked with these before, you'll know that the very first string at index zero is just quite simply the name of the program. So what I'm doing here is I have the zero index, I'm passing into a string, and then I'm just gonna output that string. So let's see what that gets us. You can see here that we ran the program and we got the program's location back out again. Cool. All right. so. Um, that's good to know. We can actually read in the different arguments. So let's take a look at our CMakes list here and you can see that our project name is testing. That will not work in this case because the minute we start testing there will be a folder called that. So let's do testing C test. Guaranteed there will not be a folder named that. And to begin to use CMake or rather C test we have to include it. And then we also have to enable testing. Cool, all right. Another thing that's going to make our lives much easier here soon is let's specify where our executable files are actually gonna go. And if you're wondering how this works, there is another video that is dedicated to this that talks about how we're able to um, set different output directories and how we can customize them and everything like that. So be sure to check that out. After that, I'm just going to use the CMake source directory. Oh, and it's not going to give me capital letters. Let's just force it to CMake source directory and We'll go to a bin folder. All right, and then after we actually create our executable, let's add a test case. So we have to come up with a unique name for our test case. We'll just call this test zero. And then we need to specify basically an absolute path, I would say, of how to actually find our executable. So let's pass in this and then also include the project name since that is what we're naming it right here. After that, we can include our parameter that we want to send along with it. So let's pass in just a string or a number, whatever you want to say, of zero. And this is good enough for now. Let's see if we are getting that zero. And this will be easy to do. What we'll do is we'll set our argument. We'll look at the first value and there's obviously no checking whether or not arguments are passed. So this is not super good code, but it is fast code. So we will, and fast I mean as in fast to write it. So let's just check real quick and see if our argument equals zero. If it does, let's return zero. And if it doesn't, let's return, well, an error code of some sort, any other number other than zero. So let's build this and it's not happy with me. Let's see here. What is it not happy about? Creating directory. Well, let's delete our build folder. There's probably some caching going on and try this again. Now it worked. And if we look in our binary folder, we can see that our testing C test, which is the name of our project and also the name of our executable, now does exist in here and you can see that there's a little test case here and if we do run c test it takes us to this little bottle 
if we click it, it's happy. It says everything worked. And if we come down here, it says 100% of our tests passed. And it passed basically instantly, which is fair enough. Let's do another test. And this one, let's pass the number one. And as you'll recall, the way this program, wow, that was fast. <laughs> Uh, the way this program works is if this is a zero, we have success, and if it fails, we have a one. So if we come in here and we say run all of our tests, it instantly says that half of our tests passed, and it tells us that this is the one that failed, which allows us to go in then and debug these things. So you might be thinking, um, what is the benefit of having these test cases work this way and if you're doing a large project I would say larger than um, one two three four five six lines of code that we have here you're going to make lots of different changes and there's going to be lots of things that you want to test on a continual basis and say is this still working is this still working have we broken anything so by creating all these test cases what will happen is you saw how quickly it can run through all of those what it will do for us automatically is confirm that everything is still working and that we haven't broke any key functionality now the way we did this is we actually are just using our main cp uh, main cpp main cpp there we go c plus plus there's only two p's in there um we're just using that one however we could add a specific executable, one that is designed solely for testing so that the users, when they get our program, they won't be able to accidentally figure out if you pass in this parameter that it will do some sort of return zero, return one, because it's always fun when users find out functionality that they were never supposed to find. But then also we're able to contain all of our testing stuff in a special test executable and we're able to use that as our testing interface. So in this video what we've covered is how to use C test and by doing that what we've shown is that the way to trigger whether or not it fails or passes is the return type it receives on exiting of the program we are able to use our arguments that are inputted in on the command line. And what we do is we can set those arguments. And then now with this handy interface, which is actually more new than not, um, this is only added, I'd say within the last few months, we have this nice little interface where we can run things and test and it tells us what's broken and what's working. And if you wanna run all of them, you can hit this play button up higher on their C test and that will do all of them. But that's all that I have for you today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you like this type of content, please do hit that like button. It lets me know to create more CMake content. And also if you like the videos on this channel or if you're feeling charitable, please do consider hitting that subscribe button. It allows this channel to be received by more people so that they can enjoy this content also. So we look forward to seeing you in the next video.